Cancer, it's me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for June 2018. And Cancer, what an interesting month coming up for you. Not only do we have the Mars retrograde happening in your eighth house, right? We've also got Venus moving into Leo into your second house. So this gives me kind of the indication for you, honestly. Um, and we've got a full moon happening in your partnership sector. So I think something's going on with your partner or a partnership this month. And it's something about kind of you know, seeing it from a different perspective. We'll talk all about that. Now, we have also got a new moon in the beginning of the month that's going to be happening in Gemini in your shadow sector in a very, very quiet place. So this could be a time where you're maybe wanting to spend a little bit more time alone. And it's not necessarily that anything's wrong, but I think that you're wanting to read, study, gather information, data, work on a project, something like that. It's a very communication-oriented time, but the way that you're interacting with the communication could be you're working on something something behind the scenes or you're doing something quiet. Now the 12th house is also a very creative space, right? And being in Gemini, you could be singing, you could be dancing around by yourself, you could be hospitals, institutions, maybe you're working with somebody or you're volunteering or you're working with children, elderly, something like that. It could just end up being a time where you're of service, but it's a very kind of quiet time. So, but let's jump in and start right here at the beginning of the month, okay? So we've got Mercury coming into Cancer. June 12th all the way until June 29th. So obviously it's in your sign joining Venus here right now. Really beautiful energy because it also makes it so your communication is very good, right? Your thinking, your decision making, it's savvy, it's on par. Mercury is a very business and decision making savvy um, energy. So this is a wonderful energy with Mercury coming into your sign. Maybe you're wanting to communicate. I also feel like it brings a little bit of mental calm for you as well. If things have felt like you've been feeling like you've been skipping around just a little bit, I think this brings a little bit of mental calm and clarity to the table, which is beautiful. Now here on the 13th is when we have that new moon happening in Gemini. Gemini. <laughs> in <laughs> Gemini. And this one is actually a super moon, but it's a dark moon, which means that here in the United States, we're not going to be able to see it. Now, this is all lighting up that 12th house space for you. At the same time, on the same day, Venus is moving into Leo, so giving a big, beautiful boost to your income sector. So what I'm kind of thinking is, what if you're over here at this new moon planting these seeds of intention because that's what we do at the new moon. What do you want this to look like? Where do you want this to go? What do you want to manifest? Maybe this is a project you're working on behind the scenes. Venus moves into Leo and says, hey, you're right. You've got a talent for that. Or hey, you're right. Let's get that out there because you could be making money with it, right? That has value, right? So something like that could definitely be happening. But whatever's happening with Venus here in Leo, the second house of value is definitely lit up and it seems to be coming from a very quick quiet shadow place, but you're representing yourself well. You've got Mercury over here in your sign. So really a deli delicious energy for you, okay? So think of it this month though, what you're with having um, Venus over here in Leo, you may genuinely have a talent you could be using to make money. You could need to relook at your budget, but I don't really think so. This could be a time where you could ask for a raise with Venus here in your second house. Really a useful, useful energy, all right? Now, as we continue on through the month and we get to the 18th of the month, we see Neptune taking a retrograde. Now, Neptune being a super outer planet, we don't always feel this as intensely as we do in one of the personal planets like Mars <laughs> goes retrograde, but I think it's still really important to talk about. He's gonna be retrograde all the way until November here in Pisces, so lighting up the ninth house space for you. And for me, it's a very faithful place for you. I really feel like because Neptune's gonna rework our inner workings and thinkings around spiritual matters, compassionate matters, forgiveness matters. And the ninth house is so much about faith that I feel like cancers you are having to step out here on some new level kind of faith and you've really been working on that for the last year but at this point I think that it does look different so I feel like Neptune here in the retrograde is having you look back I also think that it's having you look back at um educational things, travel things. Where's that place that you've always wanted to travel or that course that you've always wanted to take or teach? Why do you want to take it? Neptune may have you asking these spiritual questions about why does this feel like it feeds my soul so much? I really like this energy. So I hope that you use this retrograde energy well. And like I said, it will likely be very, very quiet. But in your dream time, in your dream space, if you find that you're dreaming about travel or, or education or advancing or faith, 
faith questions or you're having um, maybe even spiritual visitors in your sleep and they are acting as teachers or mentors, I definitely think this is Neptune showing up and trying to give you a little, a little nudge towards some spirituality. Now on the 21st, we've got the sun moving into Cancer and we are in summer. Summer solstice is happening right here, the longest day of the year. And because in Western astrology, we follow the seasons, not the constellations. This is a fresh start for us. This is an exciting time. It's birthday time for you. Happy birthday, right? Like you've got the setup here. Mercury's in your sign. Your thinking is clear. Your clarity is on what do you want? Who do you want to be? What's this going to look like for the next year, right? So you have a prime opportunity to put this thinking into place. Now on the same day, we've also got Venus and Mars coming into their annual opposition with each other. Now Venus over here lighting up this second house kind of energy for you. We've got Mars over here lighting up eighth house kind of energy for you, which lets me know, I again, I think that whether this is something related to actually your partner or related to um, anything in the eighth house, shared joint resourcey kinds of things, debt, loans, um, you know, we're getting ready to go into Mars retrograde, so you might see a little bit of delay if you're looking to get a mortgage or you've been waiting for that loan or you've been waiting for financial aid or you've really been wanting to take that astrology class. Something like that could be delayed, but ultimately what I think is that this really has something to do with someone or something you have an intimate um, joint partnership with in some way, shape, or form. And what it's gonna help you do, Venus and Mars, when they oppose each other, they just like each other so stinking much that they don't wanna get away from each other, but they will definitely let each other know, hey, you need to like have a rethink on that. So it helps us see things differently, right? We get to a different position, especially in relationships. So you may be getting a heck of a lot of clarity here. Now, when we get to the 26th, Mars takes this retrograde going all the way until August 27th. This is going to be happening in the sign of Aquarius in this eighth house for you. So like I said, um, joint resources, taxes, intimacy, sexuality. You could be rethinking something about your sexuality. Absolutely sure, right? You could be thinking about, because remember, when Mars goes retrograde, we're starting to rethink our action, our energy. Why am I doing something? Why am I putting energy into this? Do I need a different strategy with this? A wonderful thing to think about the eighth house is paying down debt because it's the house of Pluto, right? Where we pay back karmic debt. And this could be physical debt. Do you have debt you're trying to pay off? Do you have bills you're trying to get caught up in? Maybe Mars is helping you here to say, here's a new strategy you can be using. Now, also being here in the Aquarian energy, it might be telling you, hey, if you want to make some progress in this eighth house stuff, whatever it is, sexuality, debt, um, learning, astrology, any of those things, you need a group. Because remember, Aquarius likes to be in groups. It's a very friendly, groupy kind of sign. So it might be telling you that, hey, Cancer, you need to stop trying to go this by yourself and get involved with a group because in a group, we're usually stronger, right? So really interesting time. You'll have to keep me posted on what your retrograde experience is looking like. On the 28th, we've got a full moon happening here in Capricorn. So because it's in your opposite sign, we know it's going to be in the seventh house. So we're talking relationships here. And the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to take a shift here at this full moon, right? So you can have a shift. You can have a change. You can have an ending in a relationship. You could have an ending in a business relationship. Maybe a project is coming to closure. Um, you could also be just seeing that you need to adjust something in a relationship, right? Some of you may have... Um, relationships, romantic relationships, business relationships, and the other person is actually coming to you and saying, hey, I am serious about what we're trying to get done and I need you to get on board, right? You could be the one getting a talking to. So <laughs> let's just keep that in mind when we're looking at this full moon energy, but whatever it is, it's trying to end something, adjust something, acknowledge something to give it the best fresh start, okay? And on the 29th, we've got Mercury moving on and out, moving into Leo is gonna be there for a very long time because we've actually got some retrograde action and happening here as well. But now both Venus and Mercury are again here in your second house. If you need that raise, if you are wanting to launch something out, this is a great time to start thinking about it. Mars is gonna hold your action back a little bit, so you may have to baby step to get one of these talents out there. But whatever it is, be prepared, I think. This is your birthday time. This is a new season time. Be prepared to get yourself out there. Put yourself on center stage. Get ready for all of that because that's the only way we can see the gifts that you have to offer us, Cancer. We can't see them when you're hiding in your shell, okay? 
So I think this is going to be a great month. I look forward to seeing what pans out and flans out for you. So just keep me posted in the comment section down below, okay? All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I will see you next month.